Hi, my name is Antonis and I'm an iconographer and a painter. Today I want to talk a little bit about uh, portrait painting, uh, more specifically about the photographs we use as a reference, uh, what to avoid and uh, how to choose uh, the best possible photograph to paint uh, a portrait. So, of course, uh, portrait painting is one of the pillars of painting. We have uh, portraits from the ancient uh, times. And, uh, of course, uh, this is because uh, painters uh, feel uh, a special satisfaction when painting the human form, uh, especially the face. We get to explore all the specific facial features of uh, the person we paint, the adventures of uh, light and shadow on them, and we try to understand uh, how the facial expression of uh, the person uh, depicted reflects uh, the psychological state uh, he or she is into. So, to paint a portrait is a little different than uh, taking uh, a photograph of uh, a person. A portrait is uh, somehow a more official, uh, let's say, depiction of uh, the person, not only because uh, the process of painting is more uh, elaborate than just uh, taking uh, a photo, but also because the final painted result is uh, filtered by the painter's gaze and um, the painter's interpretation of uh, the person depicted. This is a huge, uh, I believe, uh, difference. Uh, I often, when painting a portrait, find that uh, I have an inner dialogue with uh, the person that uh, I paint. If I know them, I recall uh, uh, memories of them and um, my thoughts uh, hover on their personality and uh, the stories that uh, I have lived with this person or that I have uh, heard about this uh, person. While I'm, uh, while I'm painting, there's this uh, connection uh, happening between uh, me as a painter and my subject. And uh, I've noticed that uh, even if I don't know uh, the person that uh, I'm painting his or her uh, portrait, I still try to connect with them. For example, uh, I remember painting this uh, portrait of uh, a man who was uh, uh, diseased uh, in his 40s. This was a commission by his parents to paint his uh, portrait. I knew nothing of uh, this man and I just had uh, a reference photo to paint and uh, as I was uh, painting him I had uh, this uh, insisting uh, image in my mind uh, of him getting his uh, Christmas uh, gifts from his parents when uh, he was a child and uh, the joy he must have felt on that uh, day. This uh, pseudo memory um, this false memory that uh, I had uh, probably never happened, but um, this was the effort of my brain, I believe, to connect with uh, uh, that man that uh, I knew nothing of, and uh, thus to, to dive a little deeper and uh, get to paint a portrait uh, of him that... Uh, will be something more than just uh, a depiction of his uh, facial skin, let's say. I hope this makes sense and uh, uh, it's uh, this connection between the, the subject, the person depicted and the painter that uh, adds uh, extra value to the final piece, a value that uh, goes beyond the specific style of uh, the painter. This is so true for the portraits we so often see in museums painted centuries ago and still they look uh, back to us as if uh, they were painted today. We have uh, innumerable examples of those uh, where the painter managed to immortalize uh, say the person not only because he or uh, she uh, the painter was a great master um, or um, because of their style and technique of painting, but uh, also because of their connection with uh, their uh, subject, with the person they painted, in a deeper level. This uh, depiction of the face that is so timeless in its character uh, can uh, bring uh, tears 
to a viewer's uh, eyes as uh, we recognize in those portraits uh, something of our uh, own human nature and uh, self. Of course, uh, there are uh, a million ways to paint a face and uh, we have seen this uh, being explored and uh, evolved through the art history and um, uh, it is a part of a painting's beauty uh, how different a depiction can be from uh, a painter to, to another. In this video, I will talk a little bit on how I choose reference photos if I have to paint from a photograph or how I will ask the person to pose if there is a possibility to paint using a live pose. And of course, I'm talking about a one-man or a one-woman portrait and not a group portrait. Now, sometimes uh, people send me a photograph to use as a reference for a portrait that is uh, that I just cannot uh, use it. It's not uh, suitable. Um, as I said, of course, there are um, so many ways to paint uh, a human. Often, uh, uh, we often paint uh, the human form without uh, much reference to reality. And uh, of course, we have uh, so many masterpieces painted like that. Expressionism uh, gave us amazing portraits that have uh, no reference to reality. But uh, the same did uh, Impressionism. We have amazing portraits in Cubism, Fauvism, among uh, others. And uh, let's not forget uh, Pop Art and uh, Andy Warhol, for example that created portraits that became iconic. Uh, here I want to refer to the more naturalistic, uh, say, approach of uh, portrait painting, the kind we find in uh, so many masters like uh, Rembrandt, Velázquez, uh, El Greco, or even the great uh, Van Gogh. Uh, I don't want to refer to the individual style of uh, these uh, uh, artists or their uh, intentions when they were uh, painting, uh, but rather I want to look at uh, these uh, portraits uh, uh, with a more cold, uh, let's say, gaze and try to see what, how they set uh, their subject uh, and some, uh, let's say, technical aspects uh, that these portraits uh, share. We see uh, that in many cases, uh, of course not uh, always, the person depicted in those portraits looks uh, directly at the viewer, holding uh, a serious, solemn pose uh, and uh, expression. The background on these portraits uh, can be almost uh, flat or uh, monochromatic in uh, many cases. Uh, it can be a sky or uh, a landscape, or uh, the interior of uh, a house. Um, in many cases, we see objects uh, and uh, surroundings that circle the person that uh, uh, is portrayed, and uh, these uh, objects uh, tell us a story about uh, him or her uh, that uh, the viewer needs to understand. Uh, we almost uh, never uh, see someone showing their teeth or greening uh, in those portraits, uh, although there are exceptions uh, to that uh, as well. In general, though, we see people staring back to us in a very solemn expression on their face. For me, these um, very common elements on portrait painting guide me when I have to paint uh, a portrait. In those uh, masterpieces, uh, we also note that uh, there is some dramatic contrast of uh, light and shadow on the face of the, of the person, a contrast that uh, will help the painter search for shapes, for these shapes of light uh, and shadow. Uh, it will create a sense of uh, volume and uh, three dimensions uh, for the portrait, and um, this will invite the viewer to uh, to look at the portrait uh, for a little uh, longer. 
this uh, dramatic uh, contrast, let's say, in the face can be achieved if uh, the person poses next to a bright source of light, like uh, a window, usually in an otherwise dark uh, room uh, during uh, daytime. Now, these portraits can they can be playful, they can be humorous, uh, but they are never uh, frivolous in a way that uh, many of our uh, daily photos uh, today are. Um, photography today is uh, very accessible to everyone and we get to, to take photographs of ourselves or of other people uh, any time of the day. Um, so sometimes they can be frivolous. Um, Sometimes, uh, as I said, I receive photos to become portraits that are uh, completely random. The person is uh, lit by the flash of the camera and in that case we get uh, horrible reflections in the eyes, uh, cast shadows that are uh, unnatural and um, they create uh, uh, a flatness at the face that um, reveals uh, nothing. The person in those photographs uh, might do something completely irrelevant to the story that uh, that they would like to uh, transmit and uh, not flattering at all. And uh, also they can uh, smile or uh, uh, laugh, um, something that is very natural uh, when uh, to see on a photo photography, but uh, it's not um, usual in portrait uh, painting. Even worse, uh, sometimes I receive photographs uh, as a reference that uh, they are uh, completely blurry, um, they are small in uh, analysis, low in analysis, uh, they are having a very busy, confusing uh, background. Yeah, <laughs> they are not suitable at all. So in all the above cases, I will uh, ask my commissioners to rethink of the photograph uh, they want to use as a reference for their portrait. It's, you know, their painted portrait, after all. And uh, to think in uh, painting terms more than uh, photographic terms. If uh, they don't uh, pose in my studio, I understand why someone uh, shouldn't want to pose. It's a very long and tedious process. But there I could uh, arrange the lights uh, and the pose of the man. Of course, after discussing them, what really they, uh, how they would really like to pose. But still, I am in control. I can ask them, for example, to stand right next to a window during daytime to have a solemn and a sincere expression and uh, to look directly at the camera. Uh, they can stand or they can uh, sit. Then I will ask either the person in my, stu in my studio or when I ask them to take photographs in their home and send them to me, I can ask them uh, to play a little bit with the camera, uh, to turn uh, three quarters uh, towards the camera, turn their face at three quarters, experiment a little by looking uh, slightly downwards or uh, upwards. In many cases, I have to say that uh, I will have to ask uh, more than once to send me photographs until I have uh, an acceptable uh, photo reference. While doing so, I often send them uh, images of portraits from uh, other masters to let them understand what I mean. You have to remember that the most important in this case is that uh, uh, the less a reference photo uh, resembles to a photograph and uh, the photograph conventions that exist, uh, the better. It shouldn't uh, <laughs> resemble at all uh, to a photograph. Like having, uh, you know, flash uh, uh, reflections, cast shadows from uh, a flash, uh, uh, etc. Now, have in mind that uh, although this can sound a little confined, it really is uh, flexible and uh, this can produce uh, great portraits. At the same time, let's not forget that uh, art has uh, no rules 
and uh, that definitely applies to portrait painting uh, as well. Uh, sometimes we have seen uh, portraits that defy these uh, rules and they truly are uh, amazing. So I just wanted to give you these um, general uh, guidelines uh, if uh, they suit you on your artwork to apply for your uh, portrait uh, painting. I hope this uh, has been uh, helpful for uh, all you portrait uh, painters and uh, thank you so much for uh, being here. Thank you for your beautiful uh, comments and uh, for uh, your for you liking this uh, this video and i would also like to thank uh, all my patrons on uh, patreon.com for their uh, amazing support it's really appreciated by me it's really important to me uh, on patreon you can find uh, my course uh, how to paint uh, a portrait uh, like the masters and um, this is for today. I hope this was uh, somewhat uh, helpful to you. Stay healthy, stay creative, and I'll see you soon in another uh, video. Bye.